Health takes the spotlight in today's Jamaica magazine. We also have the news, Jamaica House Weekly, and the latest in our Year in Review series. I'm Adrian Atkinson, your host for today's show. Stay tuned. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade wishes to advise the public that on Wednesday, January 19, office hours for consular and other services will be from 12 noon to 2 p.m. This is to facilitate activities connected to the official opening of the Ministry's new headquarters. Regular hours of operation will resume on Thursday, January 20. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, January 18, 2022. One billion dollars has been allocated to the Ministry of National Security to purchase motorbikes and other items for the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF. The money has been provided in the second supplementary estimates for the 2021-22 fiscal year. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark says adequate funding for the security ministry and the police remain a strategic priority for the government. The police represent the backbone of Jamaica's domestic security. They are the vanguards who are on the front lines of a very difficult challenge. And notwithstanding uh, positions and historical matters that may vary, the police have the absolute and unequivocal support of the government of Jamaica. Dr. Clark was contributing to the debate on the second supplementary estimates recently. According to Minister Clark, the money will also go towards the purchase of armored vests, technology devices, furniture, equipment, and land for the divisional headquarters of the St. Catherine Police Division. In addition, a portion of the funds will be used for the acquisition of the coastal grid radar power supply for the Jamaica Defense Force. Jamaica has taken another step to further strengthen its compliance with international obligations and practices in its stance against money laundering. Last Tuesday, the House of Representatives approved the proceeds of crime designated non-financial institution, trust and corporate services providers order 2022. The order provides for the designation of trust and corporate services providers as non-financial institutions. National Security Minister Dr. Harris Chang piloted the order. Essentially, the designation of trust and corporate service providers will apply to any person or entity providing one, a trust service, or two, a corporate service. It will allow these entities to fall within the regulated sector as provided by the Act. This designation is subject to the def to definition for trust services and corporate service as provided for in the Trust and Corporate Services Provisions Act. Recommendation 24 of the order makes it a requirement for countries to ensure that this class of business is subject to effective systems of monitoring and is compliant with anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing measures. The designation of trust and, and corporate services providers at designated non-finance institution will strengthen Jamaica's anti-money laundering and combating the financing of terrorism, that is the AML or CFT regime. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has expressed full confidence in the ability of National Security Minister and Deputy Prime Minister Dr. Harris Chang to perform his duties in the administration. Mr. Holness was responding to questions posed by journalists at a press conference Sunday. There have been reports that the national security portfolio is not being handled properly as the island ended 2021 with a 10% increase in murders over 2020. Calls for a reassignment of duties have since grown louder with the recent reshuffling of the cabinet, which saw Dr. Chang retaining the national security portfolio. But in defending his decision, Prime Minister Holness says the ministry is the most difficult portfolio and requires a long-term commitment to the plans in place. We are not going to change the current situation through the flip of a switch. Uh, the problems are deep-rooted and they require significant structural, institutional, cultural, and resource reform. These take time, particularly the legislative, particularly the policy, and the structural. I have full confidence in Minister Chang, in his knowledge, in his competence, and in his heart, which is to ensure that every single Jamaican is safe. 
Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton says the ministry is closely monitoring and putting the necessary measures in place to address the number of medical staff affected by the rapid spread of COVID-19. The country is now experiencing a fourth wave of transmission of the virus. We're monitoring that situation. It, it does lead and would lead to some slowdown in some areas. So we ask persons to be patient. But if our frontline persons are affected, we have to protect them. We have to get them to recover so that they can go back on the front line. And so we are observing that situation closely. And if there is an extraordinary circumstance, I'm sure the local management will make the adjustment as necessary. Dr. Tufton was speaking at a recent press briefing by the ministry. The health minister says the sector has been affected by absenteeism across regional health authorities, including clinical, clerical and administrative staff who have to be placed in quarantine and isolation. Outpatient clinics and elective surgeries are affected as a result. And finally, the Electoral Office of Jamaica, the EOJ, has revised the processing time for requests for letters of identity. The head office on Duke Street is now offering a next-day service, while constituency offices will have requests ready within two to three business days. This is in response to the high volume of persons requesting letters of identity as they await the renewal of their voter identification cards. Public Education Officer at the EOJ, Dania Harper, says the change was made to reduce the wait time at locations and to implement crowd control measures. So whereas persons used to make the request and then wait to collect the letter, now they simply make the request and they come and collect it the next day and we process these groups of persons separately. So those who are coming to make the requests are processed separately from those who are coming to make their, their collection of the letters. Ms. Harper was speaking on Friday at a JIS think tank. She says while the letters were usually addressed specifically to an institution, until an individual's card has been replaced, the current letters are open for multiple uses and contain multiple security features. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Getting the first dose is not an excuse not to wear the mask, not to social distance or physical distance, not to sanitize. Getting the first dose is not justification for deciding that you're going to resume the parties, the gatherings beyond the limits that have been established. The journey is to observe the protocols, take the second dose when it is time, and then we will resume some semblance of normalcy once we achieve herd immunity. Before we dive into our health matters, we have a bit of housekeeping to take care of with the news and then a roundup of the happenings at Jamaica House. This morning, we declare a zone of special operations in Sab South to include the communities of Russia, Darling Street and Dexter Street. And the curfew hours will remain at 10 p.m. nightly to 5 a.m. the following morning until 5 a.m. on January 28th, 2022. All the other measures will also remain unchanged. You're watching Jamaica House Weekly. I'm Anthony Morgan. At the start of the week, Prime Minister Andrew Holness welcomed a new cabinet. The reshuffle included three new cabinet members and a new Attorney General. During Tuesday's virtual swearing-in ceremony hosted by the Governor General, Mr. Holness said the reassignment was done in part to increase efficiency and properly execute the people's mandate. What we have sought to do 
in restructuring the government is to ensure that the legal, constitutional and justice arm uh, is so structured that it can have a greater rate of efficiency and turnover in terms of the development of legislation, the passage of legislation, the review of legislation, the necessary reforms that have to be done, the giving of advice, so that all other ministries of government can see an acceleration in their pace of delivering on the mandate that the people gave us in uh, September 2020. We must move on with our lives. We must get our economy back on track. We cannot allow ourselves to be defeated by the pandemic. We cannot... We cannot afford another lockdown. We cannot afford tighter curfew hours. We must learn to live with this virus. As a result, the curfew hours and other measures remain unchanged until January 28. The Prime Minister also reminded persons to practice the COVID-19 prevention control measures and get vaccinated. Get vaccinated, strengthen your immune system, follow the protocols, and let us all learn to live with this virus. That is the only way we will defeat it. Up to January 17, 26% of Jamaicans have received at least one dose of a vaccine. Still in Parliament Tuesday, the Prime Minister welcomed the return to face-to-face -face instructions for the island schools. As at January 10, approximately 954 of the 983 primary and high schools have been approved as COVID-19 compliant by the Ministry of Health and Wellness. He reiterated government's commitment to providing a safe school environment and called on parents to monitor their children and keep them home if they are unwell. This is the only way we will be able to keep the infection rate down in our schools. Calculate your risk and make investments. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is charged to investors Wednesday as he launched Kingston Wharves Limited KWL's 60 million US dollar investment in logistics and port infrastructural development. The disbursement includes 30 million US dollars for the redevelopment of Berth 7 to serve additional vessels, a mobile harbor crane, and 25 million US dollars to expand logistics service offerings at the Ashenheim Road warehouse complex. The Prime Minister says the project is expected to create opportunities for new, attractive, high skilled jobs and position Jamaica as the maritime and logistics center of the Americas. The projects that we are here to launch this afternoon are the latest in a continuous stream of investments that have resulted in steady progress in restoring the competitive luster of Kingston Harbour and the Jamaican port and maritime sector. Mr. Holness says plans are also advanced for crafting policies to integrate the island's development of its ocean and green economies. And by Sunday, the Prime Minister was at Jamaica House announcing the 7th Zone of Special Operations, ZOZO. This zone is now in effect for South Savannah Lamar in Westmoreland to include the communities of Russia as well as Darling and Dexter Streets. Mr. Holness says the Joint Security and Community Development Initiative will bring peace and well-being to the area. I am aware of the conditions of terror that the people endure. I feel their pain. And I know that the vast majority of residents in those gang-captured communities, whether in central Kingston, Augustown, or South South, are peaceful, law-abiding citizens who simply want to live in peace. Murders in the Westmoreland Police Division increased by 60% in 2021. And that's it for Jamaica House Weekly. Be sure to join us next time for more of the news stories coming out of the office of the Prime Minister.
2021 was a year that represented great things for the Ministry of Transport and Mining, with several of its outlined targets being achieved. The trains will be ready to rock and roll, and it is the beginning of the revival of the Jamaica Railway. It is the first time for such a long time, Captain, that so much activity is going on in general aviation. The mining sector remains buoyant, resilient and strong in the midst of this pandemic. Join us on Wednesday, January 19, when we'll have those stories and more coming out of the Ministry of Transport and Mining for 2021. Senator Aubin Hill was recently named the new Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce. But in 2021, it was Minister Audley Shaw, who now heads transport and mining, that guided this critical portfolio through year two of the global pandemic. We review the ministry's achievements from the last year next. Throughout 2021, Jamaica continued to show positive signs of recovering stronger from the economic fallout caused by the pandemic. The Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce played a part in that growth by providing support to the sectors for them to work efficiently amidst the crisis. As government, it is our responsibility to ensure that the various wheels of all our productive sectors are turning. Opportunities were made readily available for micro, small and medium-sized enterprises, MSMEs. Through a grant from the International Labour Organization, the Jamaica Business Development Corporation was able to facilitate more than 100 informal MSME operators in formalizing their operations. One of the consequences of becoming a formal business is that you will have access to cheaper money to make your business more competitive. The JBDC also signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Sajikor Bank to assist SMEs with their business development strategies through the Sajikor Bank Resource Center. It's a very strategic partnership, but I want to congratulate Sajikor because small businesses turn into large businesses. Government also provided MSMEs with $675 million in loans to help them rebound and grow. This was facilitated by the Jamaica National Small Business Loan and the Exim Bank. This loan facility and the associated support services being unveiled can only be accessed by registered businesses. Financial support also came from the Development Bank of Jamaica, amounting to $3 billion to help with the economic recovery from COVID-19. The Credit Enhancement Program also continued in 2021 with a $440 million budget, which saw MSMEs benefiting from 86 bank guarantees. The Bureau of Standards launched a client services program to promote the international competitiveness of Jamaican producers through business development and trade. I applaud the management and staff of the Bureau of Standards on the creation of this program which so far has provided over 70 clients with advisory services and technical assistance. These clients are from various stakeholder groups, including MSMEs, government and academia. The topic of accreditations and certifications was also top priority for the ministry. Through the Jamaica National Agency for Accreditation, JANAC, several entities were accredited to execute COVID-19 testings. JANAC's international recognition for the accreditation of medical and testing labs will provide the assurance that the results generated by these entities can be trusted. In 2021, several entities received ISO 9001-2015 certification. In this pandemic era, the rules of engagement for business have shifted and the certification will boost your marketability and help you stand out in an increasingly competitive marketplace 
where only the strong survive. The Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce providing support and opportunities for Jamaica to recover stronger together. What are we are full of our roots and culture? <laughs> that was in Jamaica 60. Jamaica 60? What a piece of news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going boss up. Just in. The island of Jamaica is on the verge of celebrating its 60th year of independence. A whole in where I'm celebrating now. <laughs> they said the people, them, you know, them come here, you know. But you see, when our people decide, say the other people, them free paper, bono, them say if it's war, start it, whatever. We are collect medal, panta, right medal. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, The celebrations are slated to begin on January 1st, 2000. 2022 organized by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. We have more in this report. I am on site and planning activities are ablaze. Persons are advised to download the Reggae Jamaica app to know what it pre. Why it pre? <laughs> activities for the Jamaica 60 celebration. Yeah. If you don't know the app, you get the updates then. At the beginning of the show, I mentioned that health will be our focus. What better way to start the discussion on living your best life than to look at the foods we consume? After all, we are what we eat. In our next feature, nutrients needed to build a well-nourished body. Watch this. Eating healthy by having a balanced diet consisting of items from all the food groups and consuming the right portions is important to get the nutrients vital for disease prevention, growth and good health. Essential nutrients are building blocks for the cells that make up the body, from bone to muscle, skin and hair. One of the most critical ones is protein, which is made up of different amino acids, some of which the body can make on its own. We need a variety of proteins to function properly, many of which can only come from the foods we eat. Meats, fish and eggs are essential sources from animals, while plant sources include beans, nuts and some grains. How much protein you need daily depends on a variety of factors, including how active you are and your age. Carbohydrates are the main nutrients for fueling the body's energy needs, especially our central nervous system and brain. They help protect against diseases, but some carbohydrates are healthier than others. Some healthy sources include your fresh produce, such as yam, banana, breadfruit and tubers, as well as whole grains, fiber-rich vegetables and fruits. Less healthy sources include refined grains and products with added sugar. Fats often get a bad rap, but it's important to know that healthy fats are essential to our body's function. Fats aid in vitamin and mineral absorption, blood clotting, building cells and muscle movement. Fats are high in calories, which is a measure of energy from foods, but the World Health Organization recommends keeping daily calorie intake from fat at under 30%. Including healthy fats, which are the unsaturated fats in your diet, can help balance blood sugar, decrease the risk of heart disease and type 2 diabetes, and improve brain function. Healthy fats are also powerful anti-inflammatories and can lower the risk for arthritis, cancer, and Alzheimer's disease. Some of the well-known unsaturated fats are the omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. Sources of these healthy fats include fish, seeds, nuts and vegetable oils, olive, avocado and flax seeds. Trans fats are to be avoided and we should also limit our intake of saturated fats, of which the main sources are animal-based and include butter, cheese, red meat and ice cream. Vitamins are organic compounds essential for normal growth and are required in small quantities. 
There are 13 essential vitamins that the body needs, and these help lower the risk of diseases such as lung and prostate cancer. Vitamin A supports healthy vision, skin, and bones. Powerful antioxidants like vitamin C boost the immune system and helps the body heal. Eating a varied and well-balanced diet of fruits and vegetables should supply the body with the required vitamins. Minerals are also important nutrients needed for building strong bones and teeth. They help with regulating our body's metabolism and keeping us properly hydrated. The mineral calcium strengthens bones and teeth and helps with nerve signal transmission. It also helps to maintain healthy blood pressure and with muscle contraction and relaxation. Iron supports red blood cells and hormone creation, while the mineral zinc boosts the immune system and wound healing. The body also needs water, which improves brain function and mood, and acts as a shock absorber and lubricant in the body. Water also flushes our toxins, carries nutrients to cells, hydrates the body, and prevents constipation. Even mild dehydration can make us feel tired and impair concentration and physical performance. In addition to drinking water, we can hydrate ourselves by eating fruits and vegetables such as spinach and watermelon. Start treating your body right. As you grab your next meal, make sure you're getting all the nutrients needed in their right proportion. Did you know? The consequence of not exercising, consuming excessive sugars, trans fat, sodium and alcohol, and smoking is that sooner or later you will become seriously ill? These are known causes of non-communicable diseases known to damage critical organs in the body, rendering them dysfunctional, leading to premature death. Avoid the unhealthy habits, treat your body right, eat well, exercise and live longer, more productive lives. We end today's show with that reminder to look after your health so you can be the best version of yourself for you, your loved ones, and our beloved island. I'm Adrian Atkinson. On behalf of the entire production team here at the GIS, do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.